All right. So for all of you that were here last week or maybe new this week, my name is Abby Zukowski. We have been doing the last couple weeks collaborating with the Purdue Library on something called mindfulness meditation. Um, I run a business called Unwind at West Clocks. You heard from Jesse Minnie, who is an incredible Reiki practitioner, a spiritual mentor, massage practitioner, does a lot of workshops with living in tune with nature. Jamie Warnke's then presented. She also is a massage practitioner, um, yoga instructor, talks about diet and exercise. Today, I'm kind of wrapping up the series with one of my favorite topics, and it has to do with anger, stress, and fear. And I was really excited when Emily reached out to me about, or out to unwind about doing this form of meditation or this workshop series, because during the last year, we have seen a lot of individuals coming to our facility that either had tools for them to learn how to cope with a stressful environment, fear, a lot of anger with changes going on. And then we also saw individuals who had no tools and it was up to us to teach them and develop them. So although, you know, fear, stress, and anger is never going to go away, you know, of course I picked this topic and everything was like thrown on my plate today. Although it's never going to go away exactly, you will learn different tools on how to manage yourself better. So I'm going to go ahead and start our presentation. Let's see here. I can figure this out. The best thing about this whole time has been um, learning about technology. Okay, one second here. I don't want to be distracted. There we go. Okay, so we'll go back. <laughs> All right. So again, um, we're unwind at West Clocks and the whole presentation has been about mindfulness. And I love this photo because you see an individual to the left and this is what our mind looks like, a mind full of just what do I got to do, conversations I had, this person hurt my feelings, I got to go to the store, I got to pick up my kids. Our mind is just constantly being cluttered, full of just stuff, complete distractions. And then they're walking their dog. And this is literally what the dog is thinking about, you know, being outside, the present moment. So if anything, I'm hoping that meditation can te teach people how to slow down, be present, take in the environment around them. Everybody's different. So you're going to find different tools that work for you. But this is one of my favorite photos between a mind full of stuff and actually being mindful. So earlier this week, my dad had sent me this article. I thought it was fantastic. And you can find it off of Fox News. So it says, middle-aged Mickelson, historic PGA championship win credited to diet and meditation. Now I'm not gonna read and summarize the whole article for you, but it says in that first paragraph, the three-time winner of the master said he found Zen just the ability to kind of quiet the mind and get rid of all the exterior noise. And he said he didn't want to get all spiritual, but that's kind of been the biggest thing for him. This is a golfer, you know, a three-time winner. And he also obviously credited diet as well by just saying, you know, he's been choosing to eat less and it's helped him kind of wake up feeling better. And it's been a sacrifice worth making. So, you know, you can continue to do research and find mentors that speak to you, or you can just start taking bits and pieces of the practice and putting it into your everyday life. 
So today I'm talking about these three garments that we all wear. So the inner garment is our thoughts. Um, the out, or the middle garment is our speech. And then the most external one is our action. So the more external the garment, the more concealing it is. So our thoughts, although they seem like they're concealed because we don't think anybody can see them, our thoughts are actually the most revealing. So your thoughts tell the most about you. And obviously we're gonna get into that a little bit more. Your speech tells someone else about you. And then your actions, although you would think they would tell the most about you, they're actually the least of who you are. So, you know, people tend to read our actions and therefore they assume that they know us. And, and we're all guilty of this, right? We're all guilty of quickly judging somebody, thinking that we know them. Well, I thought that this was interesting because we have seven seconds from when we walk into a room where people are gonna decide whether they like us or not. And from that moment, they think that they know everything that there is to know about us. We do this to people as well. As soon as somebody walks in the room, we make assumptions about them when actually we don't know anything. So I thought that the seven second rule was interesting because thoughts speech and action are not really who we are. They're just ways in which we express maybe an aspect of ourselves in a single moment. So I usually like to tell people we're not our thoughts. And then I get this question, what do you mean? What do you mean we're not our thoughts? It is our mind that can decide, I don't wanna speak in this way. It's our mind that says, I don't want to act this way. And it's also the mind that can decide, I don't want to think this way. So we're not necessarily our thoughts, but the nice thing is, is our mind can play a role in changing what we're thinking. So now I'm going to get into a little bit about anger, fear, and stress, because most things in life they're not learned in a textbook. It's just something that we experience. So I'm not gonna talk about anger and fear and stress, but I wanna talk to it. So anger and fear are extremely consuming and they consume us to a point that the only way to overcome it is by saying that the mind is the only thing to offset an anger episode. So anger and fear are more like a, an expression of an emotion as a result of another emotional reaction. It's just this secondary reaction. So not just one thing. No one just gets angry, right? We've either been hurt, a boundary has been pushed, we've been violated, something happens before we get angry. Anger and fear and stress tell us something is going on inside. It's a completely natural response, so there's no reason, you know, for us to feel bad, but it's, there's all sorts of things going on and our body's kind of giving us a red flag and therefore anger means I am consumed in this moment. I mean, it engulfs us from the inside out. Fear, on the other hand, you know, there's good fear that can kind of save your life and then there's this other fear that we have seen the last year that can be completely debilitating. Um, so what is fear? Fear is just not knowing what's going to happen next. And by not knowing what's going to happen next is debilitating. You know, it's the feeling of not being able to progress. You're scared. Again, this is a feeling that is all consuming. Fear, it, it paralyzes us. And that's, again, what we are seeing a lot at Unwind at West Clocks that we're trying to literally unwind out of people's DNA. So the, the commonality between anger, fear, and stress is that both of them consume us. They both um, can overtake us and, and they're both real things. You know, we either talk about something or we don't talk about it and then we think about it and then we think about it and we think about it again. And then before we know it, it's consuming us. It's always there. So what do you do? If fear or the feeling of anger is starting to take over, 
you kind of have to bring yourself out of it by using your mind. And again, we all can relate to the toilet paper situation of not enough toilet paper, everybody's hoarding it. But, you know, if you find yourself thinking about it again, what did I say earlier? You know, how do you bring yourself out of this? First of all, you have to decide. You have to decide in that moment, you know, what thoughts do you want to think about? You know, do you want to be angry? Do you want to be fearful? Do you want to confront it? You know, do you want to shift? Do you want to allow this to control you? Or do you want to control it and maybe outgrow yourself? When it comes to fear or anger, either one of your emotions, you are in control. Or you can be in control of your emotions. It's either going to control you or you are going to control it. That, you know, allowing somebody to make you mad or something on TV to make you mad is completely disempowering. If you want to empower yourself, you need to take control of the situation. If somebody is making you mad, maybe you walk away. Um, if something on TV, I tell people all the time, turn the TV off. Don't watch the news, don't listen to the news, don't read the news. I, that's, that's just my opinion. If it's stressing you out, if Facebook is stressing you out, turn it off. Put that, shut the phone off. I actually would tell everybody that. Turn the phone off, shut it, power it down at eight o'clock at night and just notice how much more peaceful your life is. So again, I, I kind of like to, I want to remind people of this because I usually say that anger is a form of death. And again, we have this question again, what do you mean? What do you mean anger is a form of death? So when you go through anger, it's not really about what you're angry at. When you are angry, everything in the world ends up like being bad. It's terrible. It's the end of the world. We can't get out of it. It's consuming us. It's, you're no longer angry about something you're mad at. This emotion has now taken over your body. It's all consuming. So when you go through anger, you begin to disconnect from everything around you. So that's number one. That's something to seriously pay attention to. Number two, when you move into a point of anger, you move into denial, right? We start saying, oh, that person has no soul. They're a waste of space. What was God thinking? Wait, God wasn't thinking when he created that person. God, God must have been sleeping because that person exists. We just have this conversation with ourselves, maybe while we're driving. I don't, but this lasts hours. I mean, I have seen this last years with people where people will come in to talk to me and they'll say, seven years ago, so-and-so did this. And it's like, they're carrying this big bag of potatoes around, around with them. And, and I literally have to give them permission to put the potatoes down, you know, to let it go. So, um, you know, how do we get out of this again? All right, so when you get angry, you come up with a variety of things. And, and all you can do is, you know, those are your feelings, your interpretation of reality. But we have the ability to believe at all times, either way, it's gonna be a belief. So I usually tell people again, well, what is it that's gonna get us out of anger or out of fear? The mind over the emotion. So making a choice, will you overcome the fear? Are you going to be fearful? Um, we can't stop fear, but we can overcome its control over our functionality. Am I going to be angry or am I going to learn to let it go? And I love this quote. This quote changed so much for me when I first read it. And it basically said, if we learn from history, we can learn from it. If we don't, it becomes prophecy. And I think that that's important because again, you have a choice at every moment. If you want to find peace, you have to learn how to start living a peaceful life. If you want to find love, you need to become a loving person. If you um, want to find kindness, 
you have to start by being kind to yourself and to others. And as you live it, you will find it. You will find peace, success, love. But again, it all kind of starts with us. So what do we do when thoughts begin to pop into our head? I like to tell people that you can start off by analyzing them. I do think that this is important. I don't, I don't believe in just ignoring it all the time, but analyze it because our thoughts are telling us something important about ourselves. Allow it to show you, you know, what it's telling you about yourself, maybe in regards to a loving person, how you connect to other people, kind of entertain yourself, go deep within yourself. Another thing that you can do is you can wait for it to pass or you can decide to think about something else. I tend to like to sit back, observe, you know, are the, sometimes they give thoughts of color. You know, is this a green thought? Is this a red thought? Is this a thought that has to do with the past? Is this a thought that has to do with the future? Label it, dismiss it, and then allow it to pass. I think thoughts are fascinating. They have a story and you can decide whether to engage with them or not. There also is uh, another alternative. You can replace it. So it's kind of nice because, you know, if you stay in a situation and you think about it and you end up anchoring that, right? So you're gonna either anchor it and the thoughts are gonna continue to happen or you can allow it to move on. Another option, which Willie Nelson said this quote, once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones, you're gonna start having positive results. So another option that you can do is replacing your thoughts. And and this is powerful because if you start to focus on something else, that previous thought is gonna become dull. And, you know, the way we act is the way we think. And that that is something, honestly, to reflect about. That which we watch and read is what we think about. You know, what we see in society, what we see on TV, that's going to define the sorts of things that we're going to think about. You know, what consumes you most is what you think, act, and talk about. So I would really like to challenge everybody. What are you thinking? How are you acting? And what are you talking about on a daily basis? Because that is what is consuming you. And once you kind of let something go, in my opinion, it's best not to talk about it. Move on from the emotional tie that it has with you. You can live with it despite what happened, but allow it to teach you something. You know, if you don't want to be angry, don't go into it. Don't go into things that make you angry. A lot of things with politics, with the news. I mean, your body is giving, it's talking to you all day long. And a lot of us silence it. Um, If we have a headache, we take Tylenol. You know, if we have pain or aches in the body, we shut it up with something. And I often feel that our body is talking to us and it's, it's something to pay attention to. And in conversations, I usually say, if my shoulders are starting to go up to my neck, to below my ears, it's a lot of times a sign for me to abort the conversation. So it, to keep yourself from getting angry or, you know, some people say, well, well, if I don't get angry, then it's just going to build up. Well, my answer is who says, You know, with that self-fulfilling prophecy, you're right. It is going to build up. And I don't want to be around you when that happens. And I don't think anybody else wants to be around you when it happens. And again, anger is never just going to go away. It's something that is either going to control you or you are going to control it. Same thing with fear. Are you going to get out of bed or are you going to stay in bed? Are you going to confront the situation or are you just going to pretend it's not there, and then it's going to find a way to confront you. So um, again, when you're overcoming anger or fear, the moment we can get over it in such a short time, literally one second, one second, like the snap of a finger, that's how long it takes to get over a situation. And, And after that, you kind of have this whole new situation. And that new situation is called now, now, now. 
You can, you can choose to shift moment by moment. It's just moment by moment. Let's not blow up right now. You can take it one second at a time. That is how quick people can get out of these situations of feeling stress, anger at work, fearful of situations. It's literally replacing the thought, changing the thought, shifting. You know, a lot of people are like, what is shifting? So I have a couple suggestions on how to pull out of this, but you know, here's some options. If you are feeling stressed during your day, you can go for a walk. You know, a walk is awesome. It, you can, it helps you get a couple deep breaths. It stimulates you know, the brains, it gets the endorphins going, you, you start pumping fresh oxygen. Um, I always say like tw a 20 minute walk is gonna make you feel better. And I often think you think a lot quicker, you think a lot clearer if you leave this situation and decide to either come back, talk about it, you know, or at least get out of the situation and clear your mind. I also believe in meditating. This is an actual bear that people can buy. It's it's sold out from what I saw. I think it's called Medi Teddy. I think it's hilarious. But meditating, meditating for five minutes. You don't have to carve out a lot of time. You can sit in your car for three minutes, five minutes. You can sit at your desk. You can shut the door to your office. You can just take a break and literally focus on breathing. A lot of times I try to just inhale this energy of you know love and then i exhale love out into the space around me inhale peace and i exhale peace out around me even when people are talking to me i am always still sending them healing love forgiveness and they don't even know it and i'm simply doing it with my breath but taking a couple minutes to meditate is gonna really let you know, like, are these my thoughts? Are these my emotions? And again, that you're completely in control. Another suggestion that I have to help people get out of stress, fearful and angry situations is helping other people in a social environment. You know, it has this tremendous impact on you. That's why I feel like you are, you know, the best gift is you. And um, over the weekend, which I don't really want to go into much detail on the situation, but I had driven past a homeless person. And I think my natural reaction was, oh, don't make eye contact. They're going to want money. Again, I was making up a story, uh, an assumption. I ended up parking the car, getting out and having a conversation with this individual. And I wasn't expecting to do that. I thought that maybe my words would have an impact on their life, give them that boost of confidence that they could be looking forward or looking for to possibly move their life forward. However, the conversation that they had with me had a bigger impact in my life and in that moment. And so a lot of times I feel like when we're angry, when we're stressed out, when we're fearful, you know, helping other people in a different environment, whether you're volunteering at the homeless shelter, um, volunteering, you know, at schools, I have no idea. That often can change us. And I, I, not only does it, you know, extend other people's lives, but I, it absolutely extends your life. Um, and we have to rise above emotions in any moment, you know, I, I, I feel that the mind must always kind of be able to own the situation, including the emotional responses. So, you know, we have that human ability to control our responses, whether we realize that or not. So I did pick a meditation that I recorded a couple of years ago, I used to call my meditations uh, a name and it, it was called Balada. So you might hear that in the beginning, but the meditation is specifically about letting go. So let's see if this plays. If it doesn't, somebody send me a message. Otherwise, it's a short meditation that hopefully will help you with your day. You can go to the YouTube channel if you feel like you need to play it again. 
but I feel like it fits in perfectly with today's topic. Welcome to Balada Meditation. Today, we will be doing some spiritual meditation. One that will help us focus on a deeper connection. If you are ready, let's begin. Start by closing your eyes. Let's focus on our breathing by taking a deep breath in and exhale. Begin to settle within yourself by breathing slowly and relaxing in silence. Sit with mindfulness. Allow a world of spiritual abundant love to open up. Find your willingness to be unguarded. Whatever situation that may be going on, let it go. Take a deep breath in and exhale as you let it go. Acknowledge the current circumstance without allowing it to control you. Even in the darkest of times, there is God. Imagine that you are in the rain right now. Allow every drop to wash away your pain, your fear, your anxiety, and your tears. Continue breathing as you are being cleansed with peace and calmness. Let it go. Listen to the voice inside your heart. Listen to God's voice. Let it go. You have been led into the perfect spot for something to occur that you have wanted for a long time. Allow the rain to begin to heal you, to cleanse you, to wash it all away. Take another deep breath in 
and exhale. Begin to feel connected. Absorb the warmth, love, and grace as you continue to let it go. Begin repeating to yourself, let go and let God. Let go and let God. Hand your heartache over and take away its power. Let go and let God. As you continue on with your day, continue to remind yourself to let go and let God. Thank you for joining Balada Meditation. Okay, you can slowly start to come back out of that. And that is it for today. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Jesse's here. I think Jamie's here. If people had specific questions on topics that they did. Otherwise, thank you, Emily, for asking us to be a part of this. Of course. Thank you guys so much for doing this for us. Yeah, every series was different. So be sure to check out the Pru Library Facebook page. Uh, if you want to get caught up, because my, my favorite thing was that people could jump in at any time and learn something new. So Yes, and all the videos are on our YouTube channel. They'll be there as long as Abby says we can leave them there. Um, you know, you can go back to week one and, and watch her intro to meditation, which was really great also. Um, especially if you're a beginner like me, I've never done much meditation. So, um, But I hope everyone will check back with us in the fall for more programming. I don't know yet if it will be in person or virtually, but you'll know. Um, and the only other thing we have going on this summer is we do have a reading challenge for all ages. There's one for birth through 12 and 13 and up. Uh, you can use an app to log your reading. You get a badge for every hour and then every badge earns you raffle tickets that you can then enter for a chance to win a gift card. So Excellent. read and win. I love it. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. And everyone have a great Thank night. Thank you. Thank you.